Hello, and welcome to the Laura Braunhaven. Today we're going to talk about the Barbarous Trade Bridge, and just west of that uh, is the small village of Stagholm. So the Barbarous Trade Bridge, <clears throat> uh, nobody knows the true history of it, but most people in the region believe that the Trade Bridge uh, was built by the ancestors of the actual dwarf clans that rule the Skellis Mountains today from the uh, capital city of Zolotoheim. <clears throat> and uh, the the real fact of the matter is that the, that the Barbarous Trade Bridge has existed since even before the founding of the Braunhaus Coaching Inn. It was a, a long time before. Um, it kind of goes into uh, that realm of prehistory. Um, it existed before they started writing down uh, the texts. So it, to most people's uh, way of thinking, it's just always been there. <clears throat> and the true history of it is, is not truly known. Uh, but like I said, it is believed to be have been built by the dwarves. Um, it is constructed across the Great River and has nearly a six-mile length and is almost a half a mile wide. It is constructed of stone oak, uh, petrified wood, and <clears throat> the on either side of the bridge are statued de depictions of the old gods with their arms raised, appearing to hold the bridge aloft. The, the eastern tradeway uh, goes pretty much right through the town of Braunhaven and connects directly to the Barbarous Trade Bridge. And <clears throat> on the east side, and pretty much all the way to Arabashia, uh, the eastern tradeway is mostly a dirt road, um, and the further east you get, that dirt road turns to a swampy marsh and again to a dirt road and then finally a uh, inadequately marked trail through the deserts of Arabashia. <clears throat> and, but on the, on the west side, uh, the, the bridge, uh, the west side of the Barbarous Trade Bridge, the eastern tradeway is much more elaborate. Uh, these dwarven ancestors th that constructed the Barbarous Tradeway <clears throat> also, uh, they didn't want a, a road that could be washed out or a road, I mean, not that the road can't be washed out, but um, it is much more durable than the eastern side. And it is actually made of marble paving stones that goes all the way through the foothills, up through the mountains, and all the way to Zolotoheim. And this is, uh, yet again, another uh, engineering feat of the, of the dwarves. Few would bother to, uh, at the, the simple expense of marble trade, uh, marble, uh, bleh, marble um, paving stones. Nobody was going to spend that kind of money for what essentially is just a, a trade road, <clears throat> even as important as the Eastern Tradeway is. But the dwarves wanted... They don't do anything in a half-assed manner. They do everything to stand the test of time. And on the west side of the Barbarous Trade Bridge, this is this is most evident and true. The Barbarous Trade Bridge, of course, is <clears throat> the main link uh, across the Great River. I mean, there there are ferries um, at some of the smaller, narrower points uh, more north. But uh, this is the main link. This is how you get across. And the, because of those paving stones on the western side, it is the easiest route uh, to get through the Skellis Mountains. The Skellis Mountains, the weather changes very quickly. And so it can be rather dangerous <clears throat> to travel uh, just cross land. Avalanches, mudslides, uh, difficult terrain, uh, things of that nature uh, that... It, it, the the road is just a much better path. In fact, part of the way up through the Skullis Mountains, the, and this is a more recent uh, construction, the dwarves have actually uh, partnered with the gnomes in the region, and they constructed a gas pipeline uh, down the the eastern tradeway uh, through the Skullis Mountains, and they they constructed gas lamps with the master switch. They have an actual auto igniter and a master switch at the Zolotoheim, 
that every dusk, as the sun goes down, they ignite these gas lamps, and then in the morning they turn them off. And this allows uh, traders, uh, merchants, any traveler really, to have a better path that they can follow. Because even in the, I mean, it, yes, it's paved with these marble paving stones, but even in the summer months, the higher higher elevations, much of the road can be covered in snow. And so they they went that extra step to make it even more obvious of where it is that you're supposed to be traveling. <clears throat> Although in the winter months during a blizzard, it is recommended to just hunker down and wait it out before heading on, even with the, the gas lamps. Uh, many, many people have just vanished in the Skellis Mountains. But uh, about, uh, let's see, it's probably about 15 miles west on the Eastern Tradeway across the, the Barbarous Trade Bridge, you will come to a small dirt path. And that dirt path, uh, actually, uh, there is a wood sign. And the wood sign is very simple. There is an arrow that points west, and it is uh, etched with the word Zlatoheim. And then there is a second arrow that points south along this dirt path that simply says Stagham. And Staghom is a small village. About it, it, it sits on the southern loop off of the eastern tradeway. And Staghom is this little tiny village uh, that has existed for quite some time. <clears throat> um, it doesn't get a whole lot of visitors. And even the imperial tax assessor and his retinue doesn't generally bother to go. Uh, to Staghom for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the western side of the Great River is, I, I wouldn't necessarily say patrolled, but hunted frequently by the Rock Skull Orc tribes. And so that in and of itself can be dangerous. Um, yes, the Emperor Belushan Sestis hires the Rock Skull uh, frequently as mercenaries, but the the rock skull kind of consider that area theirs in, you know in air quotes um and it doesn't matter who's hired them if they didn't personally invite you and you were escorted uh which <laughs> is never going to happen uh, if they personally their per idea of a personal invest I invitation is to tie you up take you back to their camp and probably eat you or sell you into slavery um <clears throat> there's a whole lot of stuff and we'll we'll investigate uh, the Rock Skull Orcs as well, but we're going to start with Staghom. So the, the ancestors don't come this way. The other problem with the people of Staghom is that they are very rugged individualists. And uh, they don't really pay fealty to Emperor Belushan Cestus. They don't pay fealty to the Glossian Empire. They live off the grid and are happy to do so. Um and they they don't suffer fools lightly. But that's not to say that they're not friendly people. Uh, they mostly have small farms, uh, you know, small plots of land. Uh, every household, in even the the tavern and inn, have a small plot where they grow their own vegetables. Um, they uh, spend their they make their money from mining. Obviously, that's how Staghome really got its start was mining and fur trapping. And uh, and so they they are individualistic. They don't really believe <clears throat> in needing to import anything. Perhaps they will import luxury items. Uh, but if there is a tool or food <clears throat> or something of that nature, they will make it themselves. Uh, they. Uh, there, because of this, <clears throat> tax assessors that have attempted in the past to collect taxes uh, mysteriously vanish. Um, a lot of times it is thought that they vanish around the area of Staghum. Um, other times they might just have an accident suddenly in the mountains. So, yeah, they the, the tax assessors leave them alone usually. That's not always the case, but usually. The, they don't get very many visitors. Most people that are <clears throat> traveling along the Eastern Tradeway have already prepared for the journey, and they are just going to keep going, and they're not going to pay a visit to Staghome. 
Um, the most visitors <clears throat> that Stag Home usually gets is from the uh, Abbey of the Order of the Martyr that is a short distance uh, north and west of the uh, of the village. And so um, they a couple of clerics or acolytes may make their way down, mostly to purchase supplies for the Abbey. Um, they don't they don't usually stay more than a night or two, though. The village of Stagholm uh, does, uh, which is not entirely peculiar, but they do have a uh, a couple of uh, Stagenians, uh Gargantua that uh, actually live in town, and so the 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 main the, the most common uh, most commonly run into Stagenian is. Uh, Harik Steinbjorn. Uh, he is a seven foot eight inch tall gargantua, and that uh, he he runs or he doesn't run the town, but he operates as the town constable. Not that there's a whole lot of uh, crime going on in Stagholm. Uh, usually, his his uh, means of income is supported by breaking up the occasional drunken brawl at the Zeisschwager in and tavern <clears throat> but beyond that you know they, and that whoever was involved in that brawl might spend a night in in their stockade but beyond that <clears throat> uh, there's not really a whole lot for him to do if there are visitors that come up the the small northern or southern loop trail um he does uh, ask that they stop by the registrar's office which is kind of doubles as the um as the constable's um, house and it is actually a carriage house that uh, who when they b first built uh <clears throat> stag home they thought that there was probably going to be more traffic coming through than they did um or at least they planned for it just in case and so there is a carriage house so that a carriage can come through and they can uh look through supplies and, or make sure you're not, you know when you're leaving uh heading southerly you're not going to be stealing from the town or you know if you're coming back in you're not bringing something that you know they don't want in their town <clears throat> not not i wouldn't necessarily say that there's a customs uh, office but they, they still want to inspect it and he, so that is rarely happens though um he just <clears throat> there's so little traffic that comes into stag home that that Harik just doesn't really feel the need to investigate everybody's wagon when they come in. But he does ask that every visitor to Stagholm sign the guest registry. <clears throat> and along with signing your name to the guest registry, he asks that everybody uh, put down why they're, they're coming to Stagholm and the, the planned length of their stay. So are you just stopping to pick up supplies and then you're heading out the next morning? Are you staying for a couple of days? Are you stabling your horses uh, and and renting um, a dog sled with a team of dogs? You know, list your reason for being here. <clears throat> and this helps him keep a, a tab on, you know, people that don't normally live here. The person that runs the town is actually the Burgemeister. Uh, and her name is Desulin Frostsunder. And Desulin is a dwarf. Um, she, as typical for dwarves, she has a very no-nonsense uh, style of governance. Um, she has strong ties to the Stagholm community. She knows what the... She has been elected over and over again. And, and pretty much it can be figured that Desulin is going to be the Burgermeister for the entirety of her life. <clears throat> Uh, the people don't want anybody else. They like her. She knows what they want. She knows uh, their style of of living, and she has strong ties to the community. She, her family has been in Stagholm uh, for several generations. Uh, can be traced back to her great great grandfather, who came here. Uh, there was an Electra mine, and that was that Electra mine is really the sor the founding source for the village. And it has long since uh, petered itself out and been mined to the last pebble, but the community has remained. Stagholm sits in a very peculiar location in that it is right at the base of what would be considered the frost line. And so the northern areas of the town 
uh, may actually see snow and ice that the southern end of the town doesn't see. It's a it's a small microclimate uh, that quickly it, the 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 temperature quickly drops at the more north that you head. So as I said, this this down here is the registrar's office, <clears throat> and it is a, a carriage house. Now, Herrick Steinbjorn and his family, of course, uh, are all uh, Stygians. Um, I mean, if his wife was a, a normal human, we'd all feel sorry for her. But he, it consists of his wife, Ingigurd, and they have a teenage son, Einard. And they crowd into this small, normal-sized building. And they've actually, uh, it was a two, two-story two building, but uh, Hyrick has uh, taken out the, the floor of the second floor and turned it into a single-story dwelling so that he and his family can actually live comfortably. Uh, these there are these small town residences excuse me um here 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 um there are s small families that live in these uh, there are a few uh in in the village probably not listed on this map that are <clears throat> um i guess vacant um either uh, families decide to move on or perhaps their lineage dies off with the last person um, so there there are a couple of unique uh, real estate opportunities in Stagum. Very few, very few. Um, you could probably, if if you're if you're in that general mood, uh, you could uh, probably build in the vicinity of Stagum. If not in the t in the village proper, um, the people are very welcoming and very friendly. So um, that could be a possibility. <clears throat> the Burgemeister uh, has a small manor here, um, probably one of the nicer buildings in town. It actually has uh, some of the most <clears throat> imported luxuries that one might find, <clears throat> because the assumption for the Burgemeister is that the Burgemeister of the village is going to be uh, have the possibility of entertaining important guests. Those imperial tax assessors that we discussed would probably be making their first stop at the Burgermeister's house. And of course, any kind of diplomatic function, you want them to give off a good first impression. And so the top of the roof is lined with a wrought iron. There is a there is a lightning rod, and it, it's generally a fairly nice home. Dessul and Frostender lives there. She has two children, which is uh, quite uh, an abundance for dwarves, considering their low um, their low birth rate, <clears throat> and they reside in the manor. Um, they they li She is a single mother. Uh, her husband Balin Frostender uh, was actually working as a guide, leading people up into the Skellis Mountains, uh, but was unfortunately killed in when they were the entire group was caught in a sudden avalanche. Uh, thunder snow is a quite common occurrence in the Skellis Mountains, and uh, even the most seasoned people can be caught unaware uh, when that happens. And so Desulin is a, is a single mother with her two children, and, uh, and you know, her husband was killed. This, uh, this trail down here, this is the Southern Loot Trail. It connects directly to the Eastern Tradeway and leads directly into the town. Um, it's a, a very narrow trail. Uh, mostly it is just packed dirt and gravel. Um, it, during the winter months, uh, you might see some, some snow. Um, it usually isn't going to get much more than a foot. Um, you know, in that there are is the occasional blizzard that blows down off the mountains, and if it affects the Southern Loop Trail, it is of course going to uh, sweep further down. It'll affect the town of Braunhaven as well. But <clears throat> but usually, the you know the trail is in the sp fall spring, uh, fall winter and spring months. It's going to be more 
muddy than anything else and they try to keep it packed down with gravel so that that water can drain off a little bit better the the people of the village take good care of the southern loop trail uh, but it is very narrow and it you know anybody that travels it can see that it doesn't get a lot of uh, foot or cart traffic up here we have <clears throat> Olaf's general goods and it is run by Olaf Gunnarsson and uh it is a general store. It has most of the items that one would want to purchase uh, from, you know, the adventuring uh, equipment list in in your books. Um, he twice a year, Olaf actually makes his the trip south to the town of Braunhaven, and he actually these he purchases a few uh, items uh, and brings them back to town. Things like. Um, you know, uh, gold holy symbols, for instance, he might have um, a one gold holy symbol. Um, silver holy symbols, he might he might have a few of those. Um, they the wood standard uh, or, or the excuse me, he would have one gold holy symbol, a couple silver holy symbols, which would be the standard, and then of course in town everything else they make by hand. But he might go down and purchase swords. Um, and, and equipment such as that. But everything else that you might find, <clears throat> he keeps in stock uh, and is made right here in Stagum, including things like snowshoes and uh, heavy winter tents, uh, things of that nature. Uh, the, the heavy tents are fur-lined uh, around the edges and uh, are a much thicker material than your standard tent, um, helping to keep you warm in, in those cold, frigid conditions. Olaf's wife, uh, Brita, uh, lives up on the second floor of the general store. They have a small dwelling on the second floor. And he has two daughters, Mistina and Cherry. Um, they also live in the residence. And the second floor, you know, it, it is a two-bedroom affair, uh, a kitchen, and a common room. And that's it. Um, very simple. And uh, one thing to keep in mind about Olaf's general goods is that all of the items in this, in that store <clears throat> generally see about a 10% markup over the price listed in the books. And this is simply due to availability. Um, you know, this is quite honestly Staghome. If you are heading into the Skellis Mountains, Staghome is going to be the last stop before you get into uh, the possibility of real trouble if you are not equipped. So Staghome uh, is the last place that you're going to be able to purchase those kinds of mountaineering goods. Uh, next time on Thursday, we will talk about the Zweistwager the Zweist Inn and Tavern and Moreland's Guides. Uh, uh, Roger Moreland uh, sends uh, groups into the Skullis Mountains with guides and, and sled dogs of the like. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time on the Lore of Broadhaven.